Hey, I'm Brett McLaughlin, and I am one of the editors at O'Reilly, and I'm sitting next to David Griffiths, who is one of our sort of programming studs that we have flown in just to talk about HTML5 and um, forms today, right? I mean, this yeah. it doesn't have quite the excitement of some of the other things Absolutely. we've done in HTML5. This is the kind of the the kind of I think you said it was like the blue collar yeah. subject. This <laughs> right. is the kind of the the very practical, workable subject that. I think a lot of people are going to use. It's going to be one of the earliest things that people start to use in HTML5. So what do I get with HTML5 forms? Well, you can start to add additional meaning to forms. You can start to define what the data type is of a form. Mm -hmm. You can get some very quick kind of wins with it by setting focuses to fields and, and those kinds of things that previously you had to use JavaScript for. Okay. But the other thing that we're going to look at today, which is the big thing, is offline applications. Okay. And offline applications are really quite complex things to develop. Um, and we're going to look at ways that you can create a website that even if you lose a connection to the network, mm -hmm. you can still that, keep that website running and not just have access That's to. That's what does running mean in that context? Yeah, I mean, we're not just going to look at ways of being able to read pages while you're not online, but actually finding ways of modifying data to have an application that behaves as if the server's still there. So this By, is the form that's submitting data Yeah while it's offline. Yeah, and instead of sending it to the server, it's going to go to this new technology called local storage. Okay. And local storage is, you can think of it as kind of like a new version of cookies. It's like okay. a local database. Okay. And you can modify the data that you keep in local storage, and then when you come back online, your web page can very quietly, behind the scenes, start to synchronize that data from local storage back to the server. Okay. And I think one of the big questions that a lot of us are asking as we look at HTML5, does this mean throwing out all of my existing code? I mean, are we building something from scratch today? Are we starting with an existing no, form no, we that we're kind of HTML5 izing? Or? No, we, we're actually beginning with, uh, with an AJAX application. Okay. And certainly when we're working with offline applications, they're generally going to be AJAX ones. Okay. And we're going to take something which is already technically an HTML5 page because it's got the right doc type, mm -hmm. but it's not using any of the features of HTML5. Okay. And we're basically going to spiff it up a bit. So we are going to build from an existing point that a lot of us already have in our web page. Absolutely. Yeah. All right, well, let's get to work. So we're doing this sort of yeoman's version of HTML5 yeah. today, right? This kind of um, down and dirty, not very sexy, not mm -hmm. a lot of visuals. Um, I guess, t tell me why as a developer that I should spend time on this when there are such sexier things out there. I think, I think the big thing is that a lot of these changes, particularly modifying the way the forms work, are almost effortless. There are just a few things that you can add to a form that can change to a, you know, a relatively modest degree at the moment, the way the form will work. Mm -hmm. But certainly as browsers advance and as they start to pick up and use these tools much more, okay. you'll find that you'll be able to automatically add date pickers, okay. add sliders to a page, make, make fields required, all of those kind of things, putting in extra right. text to help people. Which is stuff that, I, that you do all the time on the Absolutely. web. Absolutely. And it, it's an ongoing theme in HTML5 that what they've done, they've taken the kinds of features that people used to have to handcraft, right. you know, and they've made them part of the standard. Okay. It's the same thing with things like video. You know, Previously, you needed to have plugins to right. do video and audio. Right. That's now part of the standard. Right. And the same thing with the kind of things we're looking at today where people would write a piece of JavaScript mm -hmm. to make the focus go to a particular yes. field on yeah, the page. Sure. These sure. very humdrum work a day, but kind of incredibly common tasks okay. are something that's part of the standard. So show me what we're building here. OK. Well, today we're going to take uh, an application that's going to manage tasks, a task okay. management application. Okay. And it's already going to be written. There's, okay. a, there's an existing AJAX application. And is it already HTML5, or is it sort of your standard it's, HTML5? It's kind of HTML5, but doesn't use any of the features of okay. HTML5. Right, so technically, fair. the browser knows from the doc type mm -hmm. that this is going to be a, an HTML5 page. But we're not really using any of the HTML5 I specific see. features. Although we're going to be, obviously. We're here. going to be adding okay. them today. Okay. Yeah. And um, you can see already, even though I've refreshed the page, we've got the we've got the focus set in a field. Okay. We've got some red lines around fields that are mandatory. Oh, um, so that's, that's not CSS styling or anything. No, no, not at all. That's something that's being done straight from the tags. Okay. Um, an interesting thing that we're going to discuss in some detail is this is Firefox running in that page. If we go to another browser like WebKit 
and we press refresh, mm -hmm. um, you can see there that we're starting to get things like sliders appearing. Okay, and again, uh, that's not anything that, that we're doing stylistically. We're no, doing absolutely that with HTML5 not. This controls. is exactly the same page as the page in Firefox. Interesting. So it's browser compatibility is definitely going to be an browser, issue today. Browser compatibility is going to be very important. We, we're going to go into quite a lot of depth about these different features and how they can be compared and contrasted in the different okay. the different browsers. And we'll see particularly that Opera is very good okay. at uh, dealing with these fields. Okay. The other thing that we'll be looking at is the ability to do offline processing. Right. So if you're using a browser and then you lose connection to the network. Mm -hmm. Say you were using mm -hmm. an iPad and sure. then you were, I don't know, it was a Wi-Fi only iPad right. and you were suddenly away from a Wi-Fi network. Right. Ways to make your application still work appropriately. Okay. Probably in a way that will be almost unnoticeable really? to the user. That you know, that you'll be able to still modify and refresh the data in the application. Okay. And then as soon as you come back online to automatically sync the changes you made back to a server. Oh, very nice. So it's not just that it works offline, but it still keeps, or I guess, um, is able to go back and introduce communication to the server once it comes back online. That's it. We're going to look at things where we can, we've been hooking up to different events, and we'll be able to hook up to the on, going online, going offline right. events. And also, oh, those are new, though. I've never those are new. heard of such a thing. They, they're new events for HTML5, and also some very quick and easy checks that we can make in JavaScript to check whether the browser is currently working in offline mode or not. Okay, very nice. Well, let's get started. Okay.